Welcome, everyone, to the Prophetic Bible Study. I'm Pastor Tyrone. I have Pastor Nike here. Well, not here, but on on with the study. Um, and we're going to start Psalm 106 today and finish it next week. It's a pretty long song. So before we start, let us pray. So Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this technology that just bring us all to here today. And we just lift up this study to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We just ask for your revelation to be upon this study and just let this just be a wonderful time in your word. And guide us and direct us as we study your word today. And we just give it all to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, Psalms 106, verse 1. And it says, praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen to that. Amen. In 1 Chronicles 16, verse 34, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. So in 1 Chronicles is actually a psalm of David as well. And in the previous psalm, Psalm 105, um, mentioned all of the verses in his psalm. And, and just verse 1 of 106 mentioned this verse, but the rest of the psalm doesn't. So it's amazing how, you know, the, his psalms are not only in the book of Psalms, but also in First Chronicles as well. Yeah, you know, David knew how to worship. He knew how to give God the glory and the praise. And rightfully so, we all have to just continue to just give God glory and praise him every day, you know, and his mercy does endure forever, you know, and long as we are on this earth, we will have his mercy. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. And his psalms are so beautiful because he was just communing with God through everything he was going through. He was praising God, and but also he was praying to God to check his heart, and, and he really was a man after God's own heart. Yes, he absolutely was. We, we know that David, you know, his songs are so beautiful because we can tell that they're from his heart. Yeah. And, and we can tell that a lot of his songs talk about how he was really feeling and what he was going on in his heart. And oh, that's the, the beautiful thing about David's songs is that they really do touch us because we can feel it. And, um, and we know we go through the same things in our life. And we can read one of the Psalms of David and, and, and just know that he felt just like how we, he understand just how we felt. And, and it's just comforting, you know, because he was just giving glory to the Lord. Amen for that, you know. Amen. Any comments? Okay. Verse 2 and 3. It says, who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can declare all his praise? Blessed are those who keep justice. And he who and he who does righteousness at all times. Amen. Amen. In Psalm 145, verses 10 to 12. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Any comments? It's amazing because it says, all your works shall praise you. And we know that in the end, every tongue and shall confess, every knee shall bow that Jesus Christ is Lord. And it's just, there's so many things to praise the Lord for. There's so many because he's blessed us with, he woke us up this morning, and he's given us the breath of life, and and it's just very, very important for us to just meditate on these things instead of what the enemy wants us to think about, 
the enemy wants us to just not be in a place of contentment and just complaining which we will get to <laughs> further on in this study um but it's just yeah it, uh, i just want to encourage you all just to really remember the, all the things that god has done for us um, and it says and all your saints shall bless you you know every day we get up and we bless the lord for the things that he's done for us for just waking us up in the morning is a blessing, you know, and we bless him for, and the things we go through in our life, you know, we bless him for. And it doesn't matter what kind, if it's good or bad or what, we still just bless the Lord because we know that, that it's his power and, and he's gonna take care of us no matter what. Amen, Amen. even the difficult times it's like a blessing in disguise, like the song by Laura's story. And so praise God that all things really do work for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Amen. Somebody had a comment? Amen. Yes, I do. <clears throat> uh, and just to add a, a few things to your comments, uh, uh, Pastor Nike and, and Pastor Tyrone. The, the creation itself declares the glory of God. The scripture said the heaven uh, de declares the glory of God and the firmness is handiwork. And so, and we praise him for that. When we look out and we observe the beauty of, of, of the creation and all the wonderful you know, things, the flowers, the trees, the mountains, the, and, and all these things that God has created, it's just, it's beyond comprehension how, the 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 magnitude of the creation itself and the and it's it's just we can't even conceive in our hearts something this massive that God is doing in 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 creation and in, including us and in, including the signature of it we are the signature of his creation because we are so beautifully made and the design of our bodies and just you can just take one body part, the, the eye itself. How does the eye, like like a a a, a receiver, in, in a computer, pick up all this this work and 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 placing in our brains? And it's just it's just amazing. We can't even man can't even come close to anything like that. Although man has managed to copy some of God's creation and come up with things that that he he has developed uh, but it's it's based on what it is basically copies of what god created he made he, he turned it into something that he could use and so but uh god's work is just so glorious and massive and beyond our comprehension amen amen um, um, yeah i also i have a little comment um you know, at this verse, it says to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Well, one of those greatest acts in, in, to me is the Lord of creation. The word was made flesh and the Lord, the one that that did all the work of creation um through the mighty act of God was uh, placed into Mary's um, womb and uh, the son of all righteousness was placed there and, and he became our savior and our deliverer. You know, that is just, uh, that just, <laughs> this mind blowing is what it is. So I just wanted to share that. Not to mention that he's raised from the dead. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah that was that was just beyond human um, thought that that was possible. And God is 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 great, worthy of all our praise. Amen. Amen. We talk of his power. Amen. Amen. The power of God. It is beyond comprehension, for sure. Any other comments? Okay.
Nine. Four, Pastor Tyrone. Oh, verses five and six, I'm sorry. Remember me, O oh Lord, with the favor you have toward your people. O oh, visit me with your salvation, that I may see the benefits of your chosen ones. That I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory with your inheritance. Amen. Amen. In Numbers 10, verse 9, when you go to war in your land against the enemy who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets, and you will be remembered before the Lord your God, and you will be saved from your enemy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lauren. What does this say that who is fighting this war? It's the Lord that's fighting it. He's saying we will be saved from our enemies. The battles is not ours. The battles is always the Lord's. Amen. No matter how many people try to oppress us or come against us, we just give the battle to him. And when he sounds the trumpet, that's it. We know that he's going to take care of it. And we will be saved from our enemies. How great is that? Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? In John 15, verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Amen. Amen. What does the Bible tell us? That no one seeks God, not one. He chose all of us. And he chose us to bear fruit, to just follow him, to walk with him, and just do what he wants, to just honor and worship and praise him. And he will give us the crown of glory. And so we, we all have to remember that. We did not just all of a sudden choose to follow Christ. Not at all. It was by his goodness and his grace and his mercy that he selected all of us to praise the Lord. Amen. Any comments? He chose us before the foundations of the world. Uh, one thing in this verse that stood out is, is whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. But that's right after where it says, that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Uh, I believe that whatever we ask in his name, as long as it's in line with his will and in line with the fruit, I believe it's the fruit of the spirit of love, joy, peace, not something that we ask greedily, like just for our, our own selves. And I know God knows our desires and it's another verse that says, delight yourselves in the, in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. But, when we truly just seek him and then he just changes our desires where it's no longer selfish. It's we're praying for his will to be done. Amen. That's a very good point, Pastor Nike. I mean, our desires become meaningless. What we desire is really not important anymore. It's just being with the Lord and, and having the fruits of his spirit. Mm -hmm. That becomes an important part of our lives after he chooses us and anoints us and, and takes us through this journey. And once we be able to just surrender all those things and really understand that it's not about what we want and what we need, because God knows what we need and God knows what we want. It's about just surrendering everything to him and let him provide those things. If it's for us to have, he will provide it. And we don't have to work for it. He just opens up the floodgates and it pours out. And, and praise the Lord for that. He says, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Any other comments? Okay, verses six and seven. 
It says, we have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our fathers in Egypt do not understand your wonders. They did not remember the multitudes of your mercies. They rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. Amen. Amen. In Exodus 14, verses 11 to 12, then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Amen. Amen. Wow, these are heavy words. Comments? Oh, yeah, I mean, just <laughs> just like what you said, these are heavy words. I mean, <laughs> better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. That's like us saying, you know, we look around and people who, you know, are in the world and they, they seem to have everything they need and they you know, and we, that's like us saying it's better that we would go back in the world than to die, you know, in follow, while we follow you, you know, yeah. but what he did was save us for eternal life. Mm -hmm. And um, this whole life in the wilderness for us is to prepare us for that and to prepare yeah. us to prepare others for that. Um, it just it it is just that those that verse is like really powerful. Amen. They would just forget so easily, you know, what he did for them. Forget the bondage that they were under, and I, you know, the beatings and whatever else that they did to the slaves and those Egyptian uh, <clears throat> during that time. Yeah, it's just incredible. That's like a. That's like a slave, um, like say the United States, you know, how there was slavery. That's like a slave <laughs> saying, I'd rather go back to slavery and being beat, beaten and, 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 you know, have my wife raped and um, then, then to be free in this wilderness, you know, it's, it's just so amazing how ignorant the Israelites were. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it, it, it was. It's, it's just, you know, I think about it is that, you know, like you were saying, they were being beaten and tortured and all of those things. They were the ones that cried out to the Lord for help, you know? Yeah. <laughs> How quickly they forgot about that. God just didn't come save them all of a sudden. They were on their knees praying and crying to, that the Lord would deliver them from the bondage and stuff that they were under. Mm -hmm. And now they yeah. sit here and say it would be better to go back and and be do that again. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's just it make God mad. You know, yeah, it did make God mad. Absolutely. <laughs> God was gonna wipe them out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I can now we can understand that. Mm -hmm. You know, just for that alone. You know, not to mention the fact that they went saw the plagues, and you know, and none of the plagues actually hurt them at all or affected them. Mm -hmm. The Egyptian was going through all these plagues, and they were still safe. But you know, once it starts getting tough, that's when you see people's true colors. You know, they start forgetting about what they went through, and. And they actually, these, these the Israelites actually forgot that God was with them. And that's the hardest thing. After all the signs and wonders that God showed them, freed them and opened up the Red Sea so that they could walk on dry ground and make it safely across to the wilderness. They forgot all about all those wonderful, marvelous things we just talked about in the beginning, the power of the Lord. Wow. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Oh, uh -huh. go ahead, Pastor Rufus. Amen. Uh, yeah, they, they they forgot about the the power of the Lord, but what they 
didn't forget about was that food they were eating in Egypt that served the body, that served the flesh. And that's what they were thinking, you know, back in Egypt, it'd be better to be back there because we didn't go hungry there. We we had these these good foods that we, we were eating. We were eating good. And so they were, they were, they were prone to, they were uh, looking at their flesh and, 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 and that whatever satisfaction they got from just eating, serving the, the, the body, like, rather than serving a living God who, who was asking them really in this, in this path through the wilderness to give up the flesh. You're going to go through some hard times uh, in that wilderness. And sometimes you're going to go hungry and go thirsty, but you're with the living God who's going to take care of you no matter what. And so, so I, you know, I, I can see that in, in this, in this uh, passage here. And that's, that's just an amazing thing. And, and I, and I can, I can see that in, you know, looking back at my life in, 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 in the world and, and the things that I was doing, serving the flesh, uh, with whatever, with, with, uh, uh, drugs, alcohol, and, you know, as a young man and, and, um, uh, and that's what I was looking forward to every weekend after when I wasn't working is going out to the clubs and doing that kind of stuff, uh, rather than, than, than serving God and, and, and seeking him in my life for, for true satisfaction, for, for what he gives me, what has for me. And so I, I miss much time in, in seeking him and, uh, and, 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 but praise the Lord. He's, He's bringing me back, and he will bring me back fully, all the way back to himself. Uh, and and I remember some of the things that my grandmother told me when I was a kid about seeking God and and praying. And and if I when I get to the point where I can't go anymore, and I feel that all things are lost, and you know, just turn to God, and He'll be there. She said that, and she's very true. That was many years ago. I was probably. 10, 12 years old when they, when she said that to me. And so praise the Lord, praise the Lord for, for, for choosing me even back then. He, he knew that those words would come to fruition in my heart at, at some time in my life. And it did. Amen. 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 So yeah, I got a comment. Basically okay. the grass is greener on the other side. It always looks greener. There's an old saying, but uh, yeah. the, the Israelites, they were under hard bondage in Egypt and they were not really um, delivered from their idols. They, when they left Egypt, the idols came with them. So once they crossed the Red Sea, they were on their journey in the wilderness. But when the wilderness started getting tough, Egypt started looking pretty good. So it's, it's somewhat, uh, for me, I could understand. They had, a lot of them had not really, um, you know, knew God's ways. They just, they were there. Uh, their faith was, was drying up once they, they, they were hungry, thirsty. It kind of reminds me of downtown San Francisco. You know, when you're, when you're on the journey and you're dedicating yourself, sometimes you remember things look better than it really was. It was terrible, but in your mind, it was better than it really is. You know, you see your friends back in downtown San Francisco doing really well, and you, you're, you're barely making it, even though, yeah, God is with you. Things are going, you know, as good as they, they are, but to you, it, you know, you, you just, as an Israelite, you tend to think in terms of the way of the world. It was, it, it was good over there, but it really wasn't. But in your mind, it is because you're currently suffering. So I totally understand the, the mindset of the Israelites and, and why they would want to go back. You know, once they, um, once they agreed to do all that the law required, then they went to, um, then, then they worshiped the golden calf. And of course, they were, they, were, they were looking to go back. They were looking to choose somebody to bring them back to Egypt. But e Egypt is deep. It represents the world. You know, it's, it's really, well, when things get tough, it, Egypt starts looking really good. That's all I'll say. Thanks. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Peter. I have a comment too. Okay. I have a comment. Um, you know what? Uh, just uh, 
came in my mind was uh, the fear of the Lord in this case and how fortunate and blessed we are that um, that we have the word because back then um, they were just, I guess, without the Bible, without the word. So um, thank God for Jesus, you know, bringing him um, and uh, getting the disciples, Peter and John, and I mean, all of them, James, um, to write things for us because we have no excuse to be ignorant like they were because, you know, we living in the flesh, we also forget very quickly of all the blessings that God gives us um, all the way from our every breath and, and everything that is good comes from him, all the provision of the, the food from the trees, from the just, you know, everything, the beauty of it all, the magnificence of the of life itself. And I guess before, you know, without the word, they were just, uh, it was easy to forget because, you know, they are so much in the flesh and they don't have anything to, to uh, go back to and read up and be reminded and, you know, be spoken to by directly um, through the word. Um, so um, praise the Lord that we have Jesus again, you know, this is just so beautiful how God just um, did all that for all of us, you know, cause we, uh, going back to the fear of the Lord, I mean, yeah, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And, you know, not, to be afraid really of God because he gets mad. I mean, like, you know, yeah, he did wipe all the complainers out. He, they did not go to the promised land. So we must just uh, think about not upsetting the Lord and just doing his will and being under his wings and everything, even though he's merciful, He's, you know, going to eventually wipe all those out who continue to complain. So um, just prayers for all of us to continue to persevere, continue to stay strong in the word and stay strong in the Lord, period. Just amen for all that. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sister Isabella. Any other comments? Yes, hi. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Sister Jolene. Um, <clears throat> Pastor Peter kind of stole. He kind of took what I was going to say, but of course he went more into depth about it. Um, it is kind of the mindset of the, the Israelites, how the, the Egyptians, how the Israelites, my, I'm sorry, how I, what I was going to say is I do understand the fact that we for, tend to forget that God is the one who brought us out. However, the enemy can paint a picture where it he glorifies what happened back then, where it looks like, as Pastor Peter was saying, the grass is, is greener back there. Um, but it doesn't, he doesn't always put in there all the hard times that you had and um, the struggles that you had that you cried to get out of. So I do understand um, that these words are heavy words. And yes, I could see um, why God would be angry. Uh, because he delivered us. However, I know in his grace, he understands too that they were not delivered yet, um, totally delivered, and that their mindset was um, altered or um, I don't know how to say the word, but anyway, yes, and I speak that in my own personal life. How, yeah, we know what God's delivered us from. However, sometimes we go back to what's familiar when things become hard and stressful. Um, we go back to our own way of coping or self-medicating instead of waiting on God to bring us through. So, um, yeah, I, I'm with you on that one. Amen. Amen. Pastor Steve? Yeah, praise the Lord. A lot of good dialogue on that whole process that really is. It's the flesh and getting to know God. The more we know him, the less power the enemy has over us to mm -hmm. Uh, draw us away to Egypt or anything else, any other distraction. What I actually, the comment I wanted to make is that in the verse that you, before we went to this, uh, uh, 
you know, supporting verses here. Right here in verse six and seven, uh, we see David is uh, talking not only about himself, but his people all the way back to the fathers. And in the book of uh, Leviticus, chapter 26, it says, if they confess their iniquities and the iniquity of their fathers with their unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me, then he will remember the land. And so this stood out to me as you were going by this, because this is actually a very important part of our walk, is uh, what we call generational curses. So David understood you know, confessing the iniquities of the fathers was part of the healing. And so uh, obviously this is a, not a topic for this study right now, but it is something very important. And if you um, want to know more or you, you're interested or whatever, contact one of the pastors because it is very, um, it's a very crucial part, part of our, our sanctification. So I'll just leave it at that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Steve. Amen. Any other comments? I just wanted to add that not only um, was God not pleased, but you know, the first time I, I read this, these verses here, it also grieved God's heart. Like it grieved his heart that he did a mighty work in the Israelites, but yet they just forgot all about it and they wanted to go back to where it was comfortable and and yet through all of that god had compassion on them i think we will mention in the in the verses um to come but he still provided for them in the wilderness yet you know even though they were complaining he still provided manna and bread for them and i also truly believe that it it's all about having the faith the Israelites, when they were going through the wilderness, um, their faith was struggling because they're like, they thought that, okay, they're free, everything will be okay. But no, they're going through this wilderness. And for us, we're going through this wilderness journey where we're being constantly tested. It's God is constantly testing our faith. And so faith is a gift. It has to come from God. But where we lack faith, that's where we need to ask God, Lord, give us the faith to, to walk in this journey where we, we don't have enough faith to, or we're just doubting and we want to go back. But Lord, we want to follow you all the way to the end. So give us the faith to do that. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I got another comment. Um, it, Jesus was with the Israelites in the sense that the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them by night. I'm sorry, to guide them by day in a pillar of fire to give them light uh, so they could travel. So there was the pillar of cloud um, and then there was the, the pillar of fire. And that was representative of Jesus. But the way they knew him in that time wasn't like, in my opinion, it wasn't like the New Testament. They were baptized into Moses, meaning that they they had gone through his teachings. And that was a lot of the law, you know, or, or the law. Moses symbolized the law. Um, but yeah, so they, they had experienced um, Christ. They had, they had knowledge. But th th it's true what Sister Isabella said. They didn't have the fear of the Lord. Or not all of them, I should say, or many of them did not. Um, but yeah, that their experience is, is um, much like ours today, yeah. uh, but they didn't know him in, in a certain way. They knew him, in my opinion, uh, from the teachings of Moses. But nevertheless, you know, they, they experienced uh, God and in, in, yeah. in, uh, they experienced grace, to be honest with you, too. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they had experiences, but yeah, a lot of them didn't have the fear of the Lord. So for sure, there was a, a tendency to to want to go back to the flesh or go back to Egypt, where it it's uh, it looks really attractive. But yeah, like Geraldine said, uh, the enemy makes it look better than what it really is. You know, you forget uh, that you you didn't want to be there when you were there. You wanted to be delivered. You were afflicted over there. But now that times are hard, you want to go back. It's a tendency of the flesh. But it's, it's a very interesting thing 
um, to see that th this is a juncture. When they left Egypt, they were trying to escape. But then when they got, times got tough in the wilderness, they wanted to run back and escape their current circumstance. So it's, it's deep. This, has, this is a very important juncture or position in the, in the journey. And it, it's, uh, it's something I could definitely relate to in the journey. That's it. Man, thank you, Pastor Peter. Thank you all for your comments. Mm -hmm. This is very deep and it's, it's, it's true. I mean, we know that, you know, sometimes when things get, get hard, we want to go back to what we know mm -hmm. and we don't want to go forward to what is new, well, what God has. And, and we can sympathize that, you know, the children of Israel had that problem. You know, they didn't have the faith that was required to go through the wilderness. And um, they definitely didn't have the faith. But um, they wanted to go back to what they knew. Yeah. And that was in Egypt. They forgot about all the hardships and pains and things they were going through. Because what they were going through now was just as painful and, and heart, heartbreaking probably. And they didn't want to go through that again. So they wanted to go back to what they knew. Amen. Amen. Any yeah, other I comment? Think, I so, think that right. the Egyptians or the Israelites, they were under some really hard bondage uh, in Egypt. And, and so, you know, they didn't have the right mind. <laughs> they were already just, they've been through so much in, in Egypt and and which can symbolize the world but praise god for his grace god, the lord knows that on our own strength we can't make it we can't make it to the promised land but he had so much compassion on them and he still provided for them in the wilderness despite all their complaining and their groaning and um he still provided manna and and just food for them um but yeah god god is so amazing he's so good and all all things work for good for a reason and, and for a purpose. Um, but there's there's a purpose for why this all had to happen. And it's just also painting a picture for us today. Um, but praise God for his grace. It's it's all about his grace. And and there's no like righteousness in us. You know, God is just so gracious to to just call us and, and bring us along this journey with him. Amen. Mm. Any other comments? Okay. Okay, verses 8 to 12. It says, Nevertheless, he saved them from that he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his power his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it dried up. So he led them through the depths as though through the wilderness. He saved them from the hands of him who hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. The waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. Then they believed his words. They sang his praise. Amen. Amen. In Exodus 9, verse 16. But indeed, for this purpose, I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Amen. Amen. God showed us his power. And mighty power that is. Amen. Any comments? Yes, I, I believe this is referring to Moses, right? And and uh uh it was for his for this purpose, and I'm not sure what came before that. I have raised you up that I may show my power in you, and so um, through Moses, God was revealing himself to the people. And uh, 
and 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 that their purpose, like ours, was to declare his his works and his name uh, in, in 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 the rest of the world and in, in, in the earth. Just and, and so w- we can see that that God's mission back then was very, in many ways, very similar to His mission with us here today. That uh, that is why He raised us up. For, for that for a similar a very similar pur- purpose and so but our our uh, uh, name is declared through you know of course the apostles and Christ himself and so we have a different uh, source for, for which God reveal through which God reveals his power and uh, he uses us which is a blessing for us and uh, and uh, I'm just uh, uh, happy to be part of that and, and uh, praise God for 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 chosen for choosing me and and uh, to to uh, spread His word and, and His goodness and His power. Amen. 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 Yeah, you know uh, this verse um, also makes me think of uh, Moses parting the sea, the Red Sea. And just how magnificent is that? It's like, what a miracle, you know, of deliberation. So yeah, it's the, you know, similarities of Moses being Jesus-like. So um, this is the reason why also we must um, obey and um, our elders, you know, our pastors and because they're all shepherds and like Moses in, in this case. Now we have our flesh, you know, human beings leading us and uh, guiding us, teaching us through the word, the ways of the Lord. So praise the Lord for all. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? Amen. In Exodus 14, verse 21, then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The Lord stretched out his hand and made the seas. It was the Lord that did it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Any other comments? Uh, yeah, the, this is a, an, another example of how God uses the human hand. Um, he it, it, it was Moses that stretched out his hand over it, but it was the Lord that caused the sea to go back. Just like, um, you know, there's so many incidences in the Bible where God uses, uses a human being, like when he, um, when he w- went to Lazarus, to where Lazarus was buried in the cave, he had a human being roll away the stone. Um, and then he performed the work of bringing Lazarus back to life. There's so many um, ways that God wants to use us human beings, us fickle human beings that we are, um, to to do His work for Him. Uh, he uh, He uh, He uses us as His. Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? He facil- facilitates within us um uh and we need to show ourselves surrender to him in order to uh in order that that can happen moses had to surrender to the lord um even though he didn't feel capable of being that kind of a deliverer of the people of egypt and he couldn't speak well, he said, and all this kind of stuff. He came up with all these reasons why he wasn't, but God equipped him to do the work of the Lord. And that's what he wants to do with us, too. Um, he wants, we, we may feel incompetent. We may feel um, 
as I, you know, the, the last Psalm as well, it's kind of um, a repetition of the history of the Israelites. But in this one, it shows more how their fickleness, you know, how they became so, they forgot. They just so easily forgot what God had done for them, what he was doing like daily for them. And, and they just forgot. But we need, we need not to forget. Um, we've all experienced miracles in our lives in mm -hmm. our in our own individual lives and um, there's a saying oh. that <clears throat> excuse oh, Rufus <laughs> that's okay I forgot there's, the mic was open. there's a saying that um, I have nothing to fear for the future lest I forget what he's done for me in the past and uh, we need to hold on to all the miracles that we experienced in the Lord in our lives and never forget um, that it, he's, a, he's still that powerful. Um, I've, I've experienced that firsthand in my life. You know, I've seen, uh, just own it. I've been, I've been through kind of a Red Sea experience. And, and, and then when things got real challenging for me, I forgot and praise the Lord. He, he um he helped me to remember once again uh what he'd done for me in the past thank you amen, amen. amen. thank you sister joanna for mentioning moses how he had to give everything up and i just was reminded of uh sister malu she shared these verses this morning where it says do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth Another one where it says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Because if you come to think of it, you know, Moses was in Egypt for 40 years and he went into the wilderness for another 40 years, but he was already like out of Egypt and so comfortable there when God spoke to him and Moses was like, how can I go to these people? I can't even speak. And and but Moses had to give all that up, all his being comfortable in in um, where he was at. He, you know, God really put in his heart to go back to Egypt and set the Israelites free. Um, but that's where God uses one so mightily when when the person just surrenders everything that they have to the Lord, where it doesn't matter. Um, you know, the, even the materialistic and not only that, but just everything, you know, God uses empty vessels mightily for his kingdom. So thank you, Sister Joanna, for mentioning that. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Sister Joanna, for those comments. Yeah, we can see even, I mean, it's funny because I was just thinking, yeah, he's talking to God when he's telling God he can't go do these things. You know, how humbling and surrendered is that? You know, it's, it's I'm just so weak and I just can't go and do what you're asking me to do. But, but we know God is greater than that. And God gave him all the strength and the power to go and do what he wanted him to do. But he had to be surrendered first, and he had to be ready. And those 40 years in the wilderness made him ready to go and do what God wanted him to do. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? OK. Oh, very quickly, the, you know, where it says stretched out his hand, it also reminds me of when Moses had his his hands up when the Amalekites, which symbolizes the flesh, was attacking, and and as long as he had his hands up, you know that they would be winning the battle, and that's also a form of surrender. Just when you have your arm, your hand, or your arm stretched out, it's like, okay, Lord, you know the verse that also says um, the Holy Spirit will guide you. You'll stretch out your hands, and He'll guide you to places where you do not wish, and and that's. Um, a form of surrender and so and he and when Moses's hands were tired uh he had Aaron and her by his side to support him Amen. um 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you know, this reminds me also of how we praise the Lord. Um, before, I would not understand, you know, why people would just do all these expressions of reaching out to the heavens. And I was just like, why is that all that necessary? Just stay still and stiff. I mean, you're praising the Lord in your heart, so that's good enough. But now, you know, I understand completely, you know, since I came into this church is when I started watching others, you know, lifting up their arms. And I was just like, oh, I feel do, like doing the same, you know, expression of just giving the Lord all the praise, all the glory. It all belongs to him. And this, yeah, I surrender, Lord, here I am. Which out my arms to you because you are everything and I'm nothing. And um, yeah, it's a form of surrender. And it's, yeah. So, yeah, amen. Amen. Um, well, something just came to me. You know, the, the Egyptians were right, were coming after them. And they were just in this predicament. Like, you know, they were in front of the sea and they're like, oh, what are we going to do? And Moses, he just sought the Lord. He just, you know, he didn't try to like come up with an idea on his own strength. He just sought God. And, and once, you know, it's so amazing. It says, once he, he stretched out his hand, once he heard what God wanted him to do. That's when the Lord worked. That's when he did something. He, he uh, parted the Red Sea. And so that's just so amazing how a form of surrender is, is just God will work through that. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Um, you know, um, Pastor Nike, when you mentioned Moses, um, when the, the battle with the Amalekites was going on and his hands were stretched out, you know, apart, you know, and then he became weak. And this is a reminder that we can become weak. And uh, Aaron and her lifted up his hands and that is an example of how we need to lift up one another Amen. whenever um, someone grows weak and, and is weary in, 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 and we need to, to, to help them. We need to reach out and, 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 you know, and just be there for them and lift them up just as Aaron and her did. Bearing one another's burdens. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Any other comments? Well, I'm just reading in chapter 14, and we go back. It says, um, and Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And in verse 14, the Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? In Exodus 14, verse 30. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Amen. Amen. The power of the Lord. It was all God's work. Amen. Amen. In Exodus 15, verse 5, the depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. Amen. Amen. You know, in, no enemy that comes against us will prosper. Amen. Amen. The power of the Lord, you know, how we just flesh you want to fight our own battles. And we are always talking about the battle is belongs to the Lord, but we continue to just want to go and be, you know, the aggressor against our enemy. But as God tells us, you know, love your enemies because I got your back. You have to do nothing. Just 
be at peace and trust in me that the enemy will not lay a hand on you if I do not allow it. So, amen. Amen. Um, In Exodus 15, verses 1 through 2, Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him my father's God, and I will exalt him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. They did praise the Lord. They saw the power, they praised the Lord. Amen. Amen. Any comments? Okay, verses 13 to 15 it says, They soon forgot his words. They did not wait for his counsel. They lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tested God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent lean into their soul, leanness into their soul. Amen. In Exodus 15, verse 24. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 6, Now these things became our examples, to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And in Isaiah 10, verse 16, Therefore the Lord, the Lord of hosts, will send leanness among his fat ones, and under his glory, he will kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. Right. Amen. Amen. It's amazing. Like I said earlier, despite all their complaining, God still provided for them. Yes. And took care of them and blessed them. Absolutely. Not all of that. But that leanness is uh, like that's missing the spiritual blessings, like all the fat, the spiritual fat, the being comfortable and blessed when we complain and when we seek Egypt and those things, we end up being spiritually lean and hungry and dry. And, and um, it's just God's way. It's God's way of letting us, breaking us down and then rebuilding us again when we lose confidence in ourselves. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you know, uh, Pastor Steve, this just made me think of uh, pride, you know, fat being the pride. Mm. And I uh, will send, you know, just a famine um, for the proudful and we'll burn it up, you know, all that pride away and humble us. That's for sure. Amen. Amen. Pastor, he will you will humble. Oh, go ahead. Can you go back two slides? Uh, one more forward. Uh, let me see. Okay, so yeah, the, the word leanness, I don't know, I saw it before. That kind of sticks out. Uh, maybe one more forward. There it is. Um, yeah, so the leanness to me in, in the Strongs, I believe it's talking about disease. And um, it, it can mean other things too, but um, scantness, uh, disease, a wasting away. And this has to do with um, it, it could be a lot of things. It could be a, a disease in terms of, you know, mental, or it could be physical, but it, it's, it's a wasting away. It's almost like you're just, you're wasted, you know, you're, you're wasting away, diminishing, um, like a, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, de it's something that really sticks out, but yeah, I think God uses that anyways for our, for our good. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God will humble those who are exalted and exalt those who are humbled. 
that also reminds me of the story of Nebuchadnezzar, how he just had so much pride, but God had to just break him down until he came to that revelation that everything was from the Lord. And it's the same story with Job as well. Mm -hmm. He had to get that revelation that, you know, we all can't do anything apart from God. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, this verse is like so me because um, I was so fat, let's say, with money, right? And and God just sent, he really sent scarcity in my life. So this is my story right here from, you know, so much, so much, so much to so nothing. So, yeah. But thank you, Lord, for the humbling and bringing me back into your way away from the world, from Egypt. Amen. Amen. All right, we're already at the uh, top of the hour. Oh, go ahead, Sister Joanna. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I just, I'm reading this psalm from the uh, um, English Standard Version. And um, just to confirm, he gave them what they asked, but sent a wasting disease among them, just like what Pastor Peter said. And I think it's important to, um, when, we, when we ask for certain things, uh, some of the things we ask for may not be good for us. And, um, and, and that's how the case, how it was with the Israelites. And it's the same case with us. Some of the things that, that we ask for, uh, maybe God will relent and give them to us, but show us along the way that these things that we desired so much weren't so good for us. Right. Amen. Okay, it's the top of the hour, so we will continue this um, uh, next week. Uh, thank you all for your comments and participation, and everyone just have a blessed day today. So God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless.